Children of the Corn was a short story written by Stephen King and first published in Penthouse Magazine in 1977. The story follows a couple that finds themselves stranded in a small Nebraska town that has been overtaken by a cult of children that praise a demon in the cornfields. King wrote the first draft of the screenplay, but the studio rejected it for having too much emphasis on the backstory. The film was directed by Fritz Kirsch and stars Linda Hamilton and Peter Horton. It was released in 1984 to underwhelming reviews, but has since become a cult classic. Or has it? Hey guys, welcome back to Garage Stephen Kingathon, where every day for the month of October we explore a Stephen King movie. Today, we're talking about. Oh boy, Children of the Corn. Guys, I've seen this movie before in the past. I remember I was on a trip in South Carolina with the family and we decided to watch Children of the Corn. And let's just say, not many family members were paying attention to the movie because holy is this a snoozer. Not a good movie, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm just gonna say that off the bat. This is not gonna be a long review. Yeah, so the movie starts off you have these kids and it's illustrated through kid pictures the backstory The backstory consists of kids killing parents in order to overtake this town I thought that was the most interesting part of the film first of all the children drawings were a little creepy the music was suspenseful and also it's a story of how the oppressors become the oppressed and uh, that's a very cool story to tell. Usually when you get these kind of stories, they don't involve children. But when you reflect on it, yes, of course children are oppressed. We tell them to eat their green vegetables. We tell them to stop playing video games. It's no wonder that these kids feel oppressed and will want to overtake this town. So that made sense to me. And like I said in the intro, Stephen King, his original draft had more emphasis on the backstory. Now, I'm not one to be like, oh, Stephen King should get all full, full creative rights to do anything he wants. I'm not like that. I understand that the sensibilities of writing a novel is different from writing a screenplay. And we've seen Stephen King make successful screenplays in the past. We've seen him do, for instance, Creepshow, which was a very good movie. But this is an instance where I would say, yes, they should have given Stephen King a bit more creative leeway. I say that now having seen the final product, who knows what it looked like in pre-production. Of course it's easy to criticize the movie in retrospect, but yeah, had they gone with the original Stephen King screenplay, I think that would have been better because he would have focused on what was good about this movie, which is basically just that the backstory is interesting. Everything else falls apart here. After that opening sequence where we get the backstory, we get <laughs> a bit of child narration and the children acting in this. Not good, guys. Very bleh. 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 The kid narrating is not doing a... He's a child actor. I'll cut him some slack, but it, it still takes me out of the movie. And when the children acting is bad, that's one thing. But the two lead performances in this, not good as well. Linda Hamilton, everyone loves Linda Hamilton. She's a badass in the Terminator movies. In this movie, she's given barely anything to do. She's just damsel in distress. Bleh character. That's the whole, I can describe the whole movie just by saying bleh. The chemistry between this couple is non-existent. I have zero reason why this couple would be together. Linda Hamilton is just in panic the whole time. And then Peter Horton grabs her head and... Baby, go wait in the car. I got this. Uh, I mean, come on. This chick fought Terminators. Let her do her thing, you know? Gee whiz. Other than that, this probably works as a short story, but not as much as a 90-minute film. Because when you watch 90 minutes of this, the plot holes start coming to your mind. Throughout the whole film, I was kind of thinking, wait a minute. Has no one else come to this town before this moment? Were there no family members of the people who died? 
who like tried giving a call and said, Hey, uh, Johnny is not picking up the phone. Uh, you think we should go check up on him? None of that happened, which is completely odd to me. I will say, I understand why this movie is a cult classic. I think this movie is a cult classic just because of that ending. That ending is so wild and weird, and the special effects are so outdated. Guys, just, I'll put the ending here. Look at the ending of this film. Look at the ending special effects. Once you see that, you can kind of understand why this movie has a cult following. That said, it doesn't forgive the other 90% of the film, which is just completely boring and dull. I will say the kid who plays Isaac, the leader of this cult, is a really creepy looking kid and it kind of fits the movie. And uh, one of the other kids I noticed is one of the guys in The Burbs. I've reviewed The Burbs on this channel before. Uh, the werewolf guy is one of the kids in this movie. Hey, Pinocchio! That's all I remember him as in The Burbs, but um, yeah, this movie is just a complete train wreck. Besides, like, the very opening of this film and the very ending of this film where the visual effects just go so out of control, Everything in the middle is just so boring. Like, I needed to pause the movie, get some air, and come back, and it's, it's only a 90-minute film, guys. Like, bleh. That's my review of the film. Not a good movie. Yeah. Sorry, guys. But I'll come back tomorrow and report on another Stephen King movie, and hopefully the next one is better. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Stephen King's Children of the Corn, an adult nightmare. Coming soon from New World Pictures.